Welcome to our podcast. My name is Mars Burgess. And my name is Natalie Formica. Our main focus will be on new evidence discovered after Serial by Sarah Keoning was released. She dug into the case of Heyman Lee's murder and it became a big hit. Her podcast helped a lot in the work of bringing this case back to life and trying to understand all the unanswered questions. New DNA evidence was released soon after the podcast's final episode. Immediately, Mars and I knew we wanted to research how those DNA samples contributed to Adnan's case, and we wondered why they weren't released sooner. We found things like Brady violations, cell tower evidence, DNA evidence, new suspects, free trials, and more. To start off, Kevin Urich was a trial prosecutor who was known for committing several Brady violations during Syed's case, and you're probably wondering what that is. So, a Brady violation is when the prosecution hides or fails to disclose evidence that's favorable to a criminal defendant. Kevin Urich tried to hide tons of things that would have helped Adnan to be proved innocent. And what are some examples of that? Well, the most crucial things were hair evidence and a plea deal that was in favor of one of the witnesses. Kevin Urich knew that if he won this, he would be getting paid a really decent amount of money. To branch off of that, Syed's attorney was doing the exact opposite. He was working hard to bring crucial evidence to help Adnan's case. In August of 2015, his attorney, Justin Brown, submitted new cell tower evidence. That's really interesting. What did he find? Essentially, it was an information sheet from AT&T stating that only outgoing calls provided reliable location status and incoming calls did not. Right, and that's weird considering all of the cell records used in Adnan's conviction were incoming and therefore labeled as unreliable. And this evidence wasn't even shown at the original trial, which is what makes it more interesting to look into. Justin Brown submitted a supplement to reopen post-conviction proceedings. At this point, the public is on the edge of their seats waiting for something big. Right, I mean, eventually his request was granted and the post-conviction relief case was reopened. To explain what that is a little better, a post-conviction relief case is a kind of post-trial procedure that allows the defendant to bring more evidence or issues to light. The case took place in early February. Asia McLean gave her first testimony, and the court reviewed her letters to Adnan with her. To nobody's surprise, her story didn't change at all. And do you think that added more liable evidence to this case? Well, yes, actually. A lot of evidence didn't go together, and it was good to have something that's still the same after all these years. But was that enough to move people to believe Adnan was innocent? Surprisingly enough, the items that were actually most helpful in the retrial were his shoes. They had the most DNA-heavy sample, and they strangely were never tested during the original investigation. We'll dig deeper into why they were not tested later on. For now, Natalie will tell you about some of this new DNA. So trailing back a little bit to Hayes' shoes, there was more than one match for DNA, but Adnan's was nowhere to be found. Weird. Right? And nevertheless, this helped tremendously in his retrial when he was granted the ability to be put on house arrest. In late March of 2019, even more DNA evidence was announced. They contained samples from 12 different items found in Lincoln Park. Why would they hide so many things that would bring them closer to the real truth of this case? There could be many reasons. Maybe they didn't think they were significant enough, or maybe it was something bigger they wanted to hide. The retrial surfaced things like Hay's necklace, her clothing, and fingernail clippings. Yet, strangely enough, none of the new item samples match Adnan or Jay's DNA again. If Jay were to have strangled her, wouldn't his DNA be found somewhere on her necklace, or possibly even under her fingernails if she tried to fight back? See, I thought the same thing. Here's a quote from Adnan's attorney. While these DNA results do not reveal the true killer, they do go a long way in showing that the wrong person is in prison. Related to that quote, one of the latest suspects was a sexual assaulter who in the past had attacked a woman in her own car. When police found Hay's car, it was only a short distance away from one of the sexual assaulter's relatives' homes. Connecting these two events, it's strange that this man was known for attacking a young woman in her car and that it's a possibility for Hay's murder, yet it wasn't looked into as much as it should have been. For all we know, Hay could have also possibly been killed in her car by the same suspect. Maybe Adnan and Jay were even in some illegal relationship with them. Exactly. Someone had to have found something to connect this to Hay. To make matters more confusing, two more people were discovered to have had a motive to kill her. There could have been two completely different people involved in this murder. They may have even worked together. Their identities are undisclosed for now, but investigators are lightly researching them as suspects. So you know Sarah Keonig, the woman who wrote that serial podcast? She recently spoke out about all the new evidence. Oh yeah, I think I saw the NBC News article based on her opinion. She basically had mixed emotions, but seemed upset that most or all of the evidence cited in the prosecutor's prosecutor's motion to overturn the conviction was available since 1999. She talked about the fairness of this and included her resentment against the prosecution. As of March 28, 2023, Adnan Sayed's conviction was reinstated and he is now incarcerated again. So the newfound DNA wasn't enough? 
With not enough information to convict anyone else, Syed is back spending his life behind bars. I read that another big factor in the reinstatement was Hay's parents speaking out about how they never got to voice how they felt. They said that without Adnan being in jail, they had no one getting punished for the murder of their daughter. I'd say that that is more than fair enough for them to feel, though. They'll probably spend the rest of their lives wondering who would do something like this and what their reason was. Most definitely. I can't even imagine how frustrated they must have been. Not being able to have closure for a case that started 24 years ago, it's absolutely terrible how many of these kinds of cases go unsolved. It's sad. His family has suffered so much, and I feel like so many things were overlooked or swept under a rug that, it could, that could have helped uncover the right person and bring justice to Hay a whole lot sooner. That's also a really unfortunate part of it. People still don't have any idea what the real motive was. It seems like nobody even knows where to look. Sarah was right to be mad at the police and the prosecution. 24 years is far too long. Speaking of opinions, I wanted to ask you a question. What are your main thoughts or takeaways from everything we've talked about? I feel like everything is really unjustified. Why would so many things be kept from a trial to help a person that could have had nothing to do with this murder? If they were so set on finding the right person to punish for this, they should have reviewed everything. Nothing should have been left out or kept from a trial. Like we've said all along, it really could have been the difference between the right person and the wrong person in prison. Yes, I completely agree. I especially agree on the fact that if they truly wanted to find the murderer for this case, why wouldn't everything be considered? Personally, what really stuck out to me was the at and cell tower evidence. It came from an at and information sheet that was accessible to anyone who contacted customer service asking for it. But why did nobody think to ask? What if they knew all along but decided to keep it a secret? There are millions of questions about this case that will probably never be answered. I agree. The more questions pile up, it seems like the less people are motivated to answer these questions. And before we end, we wanted to thank Sarah Koenig for inspiring us and for the lengths she went to show this case to the world. Well, that's all we have for today. We hope you enjoyed it and that we could give you some insight on this loose-ended trial.